Hello, this is step five of the hands-on train and deploy real-time ML. If you remember, so far we've trained a machine learning model, we've pushed it to the model registry, and now it's time to make it available to the rest of the infrastructure. That is, we need to deploy it. For that, we're gonna use a REST API endpoint, and we're going to use a serverless deployment platform called Cerebrium, which makes it extremely easy to push models to production. Let's see how. The first thing we need to do is we go to cerebrum.ai and we're going to sign up. I already did that. You can do that for free. So here on the top right corner, I'm going to click on login. And then I'm going to see my dashboard. The first thing I see is the list of models that I'm currently running. And this is precisely the model that we are going to deploy. It's already running because I ran the code uh, before, but uh, you won't see anything at the beginning. Going back to the main page in Cerebrum, I'm going to go to documentation. And then I'm going to show you the things we need to deploy a model using serverless uh, tools like Cerebrum. So we're going to use Cortex. This is the name of the platform dedicated to deployments. What do we need to deploy a model with Cerebrum? It's very easy. The first thing we need is to sign up as we did and to get an API key. This API key is a private value that you need to keep that allows you to communicate with the backend. Now, what do I need to prepare in terms of code? You need two things. You need to create the py file that basically is the same as a typical Flask API. So it's a model that specifies how your model responds when an incoming request hits in. And the logic is simple. We load the model, we process the request, we generate the predictions and we return it. And then the second thing we need to provide is a requirements file. These are the dependencies that Cerebrum needs to install on this remote server to run our inference code. Once you have these two things, we're just going to use the Cerebrum deploy command that you can see right here. So now let's go to the code to see how this thing uh, looks like in our case. So here is the code. Here I went to the predict.py file. This is the function that expresses the inference logic. How does it work? It's simple. The first thing we do is we load environment variables that we need. In this case, our model is stored in the Comet ML uh, model registry. So in our inference script, we need to first download that model from the registry. And to do that, we need to access these secrets, these confidential values that I'm not pasting here, but I'm loading as environment variables, which are the workspace in Comet, the workspace name, the API key, and then the model name. Model name is the name of the model registry where you push your model. So once you first load the environment variables, the next thing you do is you load the model. As you can see, this call is at the very top. This call is here so that it just runs once. Once we push the model to Cerebrum. We don't want this thing to run every time an incoming request hits our REST API. This is just run once and then it persists in memory. So here we load the model from the Comet ML registry. And then Cerebrum uses Pydantic. Pydantic is a, is a very standard uh, Python library to specify, basically, uh, provide information about the object that you are talking about. It's a way to provide typing information that it doesn't exist per se in Python. It exists in more in type languages, for example, in C or Java. But it's a way to introduce it in Python that really helps validate inputs. So here we specify how does the input look like? In our case, the input is going to be the historical prices of Ethereum in the last 24 hours. And this is what we're expressing right here with this class. And now finally, this is the function that performs the inference logic. How does it work? It receives an item, this is the input. Then it transforms it, because this is a JSON, into the Pydantic class that we define right here. And then basically, it transforms that into a pandas data frame because this is the format of the input that our scikit-learn model expects. Then we pass it to the model with a model.predict and then we get the prediction. This is an array, so we just get the first value to extract the float inside it and then we return. And that's it in terms of code. Now, how do you push that to the Cerebrum platform? Here I created a make file with a command make deploy. How does it work? First, it runs a sub command called prepare deployment. Prepare deployment basically puts together in a single folder all the files that Cerebrum needs 
in order to deploy your model. And these are all the source code files in the source folder, plus a requirements file that I'm generating on the fly from my uh, Py project because I'm using Poetry. So we push all the source files and the dependencies to this folder that I call deployment dir right here. And then once this folder is prepared, we cd into this folder and then we run the command cerebrum deploy. Here we pass three parameters, which is which are the API key. This is the private API key that you will find on your dashboard. So let me go there. If I go to the dashboard here on, under API keys, if you click there, you will see yours. This is a confidential value, so don't share it with anyone. Second parameter is the hardware. In this case, I'm running a very simple model. It's lightweight. I don't need uh, expensive GPU, so I'm just setting a CPU. But be aware that if you're deploying, for example, a stable diffusion or a large language model, you definitely need GPUs here. And then finally, the name of the model. This is the name that we saw before on our dashboard. So when you run make deploy, the model is built, is pushed to the Cerebrium platform, and it's available. So you can ink it and you can use to generate predictions. But this is something that I'm going to show you in the next lecture. So run, make, deploy, and let me know if you have problems.